Breakfast with your girl K. As you can see by the title, we are reviewing Triple Threat by Relentless Aaron. Before I begin, I have to shout out Genesis Tafari. She suggested the Blues Eyes by Toni Morrison. I forgot to shout you out last video, so my apologies. Um, Triple Threat was suggested by Kiki Hendrix. So shout out to you for suggesting this book. You already know we're about to get into the review. You already know I got my wine right here. I'm drinking. I'm drinking luscious vine. So that's the wine I'm drinking. And then just to let y'all know, the next book review is gonna be Imani All Mine. Um, of course, I have the person who suggested this name written down. I don't remember off the top of my head, but this is the next book review. Throw that over there. All right, so you already know. I got my notes. So let's just get into it. Nothing but to do it. All right, so put that down. So, Triple Threat, right? With the book, we are introduced to three characters. We got River Burlington, Sissy Dixon, and April Davis, right? So, before I even start the book, I have to stop doing this. So, I was looking at the cover, right? There's only one woman on there. So, I was like, if it's three characters, why is there one woman? Maybe she's just scandalous. I don't know, but I was a little, I was questioning that. But anyways, let's get into the first character, River Burlington. So we're introduced to River Burlington. She's the first character. Um, this book is like married like the cartel series. So again, I'm not jumping all over the place. I'm going in chronological order, right? So River is a certified killer. She's 24. She enjoys killing men. She basically has no heart. She and she only kills men who disrespect women, who rape women, who hurt women, who abuse women. Any any man that has done a woman wrong and she interacts with them or she she finds out about them or she just happens to meet them that day, she is going to kill them. Right? She is a she is a bona fide psychopath. Um she's not just shooting them, she's torturing them. She she's um What's the word I'm looking for? She, she teases them. She her, her murders are brutal. Um, for So far, she hasn't been caught by the police. They have named her the uh, Pink Heart Murderer. Um, and she, she's satisfied with her work. And she's always taking it to the next the next level, right? So we're in the, in the first chapter, she's at a club. She meets a producer, right? So her and the producer, they go back to the um to his house. So he has money or whatever. So he she's thinking like he's different. She's a, she her thought process that maybe like she'll meet a guy and that guy might take out from f take away from the life that she's currently living. She don't have to do that no more. She's honest, right? So they get back to his house. She and I should mention that she always carry around uh I believe it was a caliber thirty eight, right? So they get back to his house, they on they on the bed, you know, the dude going giving her oral sex please of her this that third. Next thing you know, the um dude's wife walks in. So all that Mr. Mr. Nice guy went out the window because the wife is like, Oh, you in here having sex with a tramp, this that third. So he was he basically run up the wife, like this she mean nothing to me. She's a hoe, she's all that. So Ripper's like, hold on, hold on, hold on, like I'm not a oh, I'm not a thought like you wasn't just saying that, right? So River's like, all right, I'm about to just leave. Next thing you know, the wife get mad, go into the kitchen and come out with a knife. So they argue. Next thing you know, the wife try to charge is charging her, charging at her, right, with the knife like that. So I, I believe this the wife was the first female that River um, River killed. She never really kills women. So next thing you know, she um, River has stayed in the midst of when they walked in the door. She had dropped her bag by the door. They was having like whatever passionate sex, right? She goes for the the bag, gets her gun, shoots the wife in the head. The husband standing over here looking at his wife. He tried to charge River. River shoots him. Two birds down. One stone. So she's like, damn, wrong place, wrong time. She don't really care. So she ended up um, leaving. She got away with these murders. So that's the first the first uh, murder. The guy's, the producer name was um, Barry, right? So after that, you know, this is the part that disgusted me. And I don't know. 
it's gonna disgust you too. So she went home, right? Um, River's nasty. <laughs> River's River's nasty. She went home. She has a dog, right? And um, she makes her dog perform oral sex on her. And when I read that, I stopped and I, I went back. I'm like, did I just read? <laughs> but yeah, she she does that. And I was just I was just disgusted. So that's River. Next, we meet Sissy Dixon. So Sissy Dixon, she is a police officer. She was um, assigned to a Brooklyn um, department precinct, and then she transferred to the Bronx because, you know, Brooklyn had too much murders. Uh, Brooklyn had too much um, crimes that was going on. She couldn't handle it, so she, she wanted to go back to the Bronx because that's where she's from. So she's transferred to the Bronx, um, right? And then we should also, you should also know that she's allergic to the crime scene. Well, not really allergic. She's just more so when she sees blood, she throws up, right? Um, she passes out. So at one point she had this, responded to a domestic uh, dispute. There she got, she got a new partner when she went to the Bronx as well. Um, in the midst of everything, the, the wife was on the floor. The husband's nowhere to be found. The wife is bleeding. She's there, she's the blood, she passes out, she goes to the hospital, right? And at the hospital she meets, she, um, they call her best friend, April Davis, right? So we meet April Davis. April Davis is a journalist. Um, she's doing like little articles here and there. Uh, let's see here. So April and Sissy met when April was doing a, a story on Sissy where Sissy was in a competition in which she was like, it was like a superwoman competition. April was doing pieces on um, strong, independent women. Um, so when they met, you know, they instantly took a liking to each other. Uh, they started hanging out, you know, Sissy provided her with the interviews. It was, it was, it was an instant bond, right? And, um, you know, April supported Sissy and what she was doing. She, she loved everything about it. So that's what, that's that. So now the chapter goes back to River. So you, now you've met all three women. All right. So the following follow up is where River is in a bar drinking, right? Hold on, I just want to make sure I get this one right, because I'm telling you, Rippers is crazy. All right. So Rippers in the bar drinking. She's minding her business. You know, another bona fide wannabe producer who hang out with a big rapper hit her up at the bar talking all that. So she's like, all right. They go back to the Ritz now, you know, he he's into all that that uh kinky stuff. They, you know, they they having sex, regular, regular sex, but then he start getting he start getting crazy. Um he basically low key raped her. We just gonna start, say it right that he raped her. Um she was acting like the the thing with River is that she enjoys the rape, but she is on a type of timing where she was telling him no. And he, he still did what he did. So he raped her. But she enjoyed it. Uh, for, uh, what's the sadism? Something like that. I forgot the name of it. Right? So she's just like, all right. So you you just going to do what you do. So he's basically like, oh, what's his name? Hold on. Let me see if I can get his name. I remember his name. So she basically like, all right, now I got to kill you. Like, you think you could just do what you want to a woman and get away with it. But she didn't kill him right then and there for the simple fact that they already seen her at, at the bar with him. They see, they went, it was in the Ritz uh, Carlton Hotel. So, you know, staff seen him, the cameras called. So she, she was plotting on him. So she waited a couple weeks. He kept calling, you know, he was like, we need to hook up again. I want to, um, I miss, I miss you, I miss your kitty cat, all that extra stuff. So she plans, she plans, she's very strategic. I'll give you her, give her that. She's very strategic, she knows what she's doing. So she eventually calls him back like, okay, let's, let's meet up, right? So this was the crazy part. So she was like, all right, I'm planning a date, right? So she plans a date, um, 
where they go to the Bronx Zoo. They get to the Bronx Zoo. He's like, oh, you know what you what you doing? You know, you you really a freak while we here. So they walk you through all the little and animal stuff and all that. You know, monkeys, all that. They get to the cats department. The cats, you know, the lion, tiger, yeah, lion, tigers, whatever was, was a cat, whatever was a cat, jaguars, all that extra stuff. That's in the they at the Bronx Zoo. So. She she has a gun on her. When they get inside the, the cat's cages all that, they're looking at the cats and all that. He's like, all right, like, what are we doing? This, that, and third. Next thing you know, she basically tell him, like, you think that you could just take whatever you want? And then he's shitting himself, you know. He's like a young dude. Well, he's not really a young dude. He's, I think he was, what, his 40s when he looked young or whatever. So long story short, um, she shot him in both the legs, and she fed his ass to the lions. Two lions at that, Right. She got access to the Bronx Zoo because she used she used to work there. So she she made copies of the keys. She also was cool with a co-worker, a dude again, and she fed the co-worker to the lions as well because I guess he did some, some crazy shit. So that's that. And I'm just like, I mean, well, River's character, despite her psychoticness, I understand why she was killing these men because these men felt like they they had they had all the power over women. They could do whatever they want and get away with it, and it was just cool. And they was they was getting away with it. So I understand her motive behind killing these men because you know the world wouldn't miss the, these men. Like they want, you get what I'm saying? And they, the wives and the girlfriends was free of the abuse. But you know you can't take the law into your own hand. And it, it becomes crazier when she enjoys the killing. You know, come on. But again, I understand her motives for doing what she did. Like, I didn't feel bad for the men in the in the book dying. Like, I mean, you hurt women. Karma zips, right? So that's that. So where we at now? So now we back to Sissy. So Sissy now is at her apartment. When she gets to her apartment, there's a basket there, right? So the basket is like, oh, congratulations, something like that. So she has, she basically has a secret admirer. She doesn't know who the secret admirer is. Um, they continue sending her baskets with little cheerful messages. So she knows she's feeling up inside. I also should mention that um, Sissy don't, she don't talk to to men. She stay clear of men. Um, she has uh, daddy issues. Her father, her father left her when she was young. April also has uh, daddy issues. Her father left her. Well, did she know her father? Is she the knew her father? Her father left her. Um, April is also a devoted Christian. Like she takes being a Christian to a whole new level. Um, she used Christianity. She used her faith as a way to uh, mask what she's feeling inside to fill a void. Um, so basically, like if she's talking, like say she was talking to me, everything would be like a scripture. She's calling this, then the third, and you know, for the most part, that's all. That's okay. But when, when in the sense you're using God as a shield, not to really heal you, but to hide from something that that stems from a a, a problem, right? So that that's that. So April's always preaching to sissy, um, and trying to use God as a reason why she don't. I mean. In a way, people use the you know not really yeah use their faith as a way to be you know live a certain lifestyle. But she used it her way is using it as an excuse if you if you understand what I'm saying. Like she she's not living her, the full extent of her life because she feel like she she's she can't if she do something wrong, you know. God's gonna strike her down, and I mean that's no way to no way to live because no one is perfect. She tries to live a perfect life, so that's in a way where her fate kind of hinders her, right? Well, right there. That's that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. <clears throat> so April now is on the type of timing where. Her her work for the woman in Parliament and the articles is not going well. She needs a transition from that kind of piece because she's not making any money. She's um and the only thing that's selling right now is the fact that the murder. So in the in the media at the time, you know they they're painting the pink heart murderer that's on the loose and only killing men and stuff like that. So that's what's making money. That's what's selling. So sissy is a. Uh, her officer, so she's like, you know, sissy must know what's going on. You know, I'm I'm gonna need sissy to help me out. 
Um, let's see here. At one point, her and Sissy was having a conversation, and Sissy slipped up with like, I think the killer is a is um, you know, we know the killer is loose in the Bronx. I think the killer is a a a, a woman. Um, what else did she say? Yeah, basically that, right? So. She ends up cooking a dinner for Sissy. Sissy like chicken and all that extra stuff. Next thing you know, she tells Sissy, like, listen, this is what it is. I'm trying to make a transition. I, I need your help, right? So we just gonna um pause right there. So Sissy's like, I'm gonna just think it over. I think it was the next day or whatever. So the following day, uh April decides that she's gonna go to Sissy apartment surprise her again. At the apartment, she sees a dude dropping off a, a basket. So she's like, oh, that's Sissy Secret Admirer. So the, the dude, in, at first glance, ref, uh, portray, is reflected as, well, her perception, she views him as white, right? He looks like a white man. So she approached him like, oh, you you the coward that's um, dropping off baskets. Do you want to come away? He's running. He's trying to run away. And then... She's like, oh no, you. Uh, she figures out that that um he's her daddy and that he's a secret admirer. And then you know they get the tone. He's like, I'm not a coward. I just don't know how to approach her after all these years. This and the third. So basically, April agrees to like, listen, um, we can communicate. I'm gonna help you out. Uh, I'm gonna get you know. I want to see if you really about it. If you need to be in my friend's life, so you know. We're going to hang out. I'm going to get to know you. So, he agrees, right? So, I'm like, all right. Like, I understand. I'm like, April is a... At the time, I'm like, April is a real friend. Like, April's like, all right. You know, I'm about to fill this dude out to see if he got my sis best interest in heart before. I'm like, yo, your daddy's here. I'm trying to meet your daddy this time the third. So, I'm like, all right. I understand that. You feel me? But just wait. And on that note, I'm going to take a sip. But I should mention that April is jealous of Sissy's life. The reason why she's jealous of Sissy's life because she sees Sissy as, you know, she has her own apartment. She has a career. She's doing well for herself. She seems happy. Um, and on top of that, her daddy just tr is trying to come back into her life, right? So April, I already knew April had uh, alternative motives. And I was trying to figure out where it's going. But y'all going to see, like, it gets sick. I'm not even going to lie. It gets sick. So, there's that. And again, I told you she's using her religion to, to fill a void. And I'm just like, all right, you know, on a side note, you, you portray yourself to be this devoted, respectful Christian woman who, who has everybody's best interests at heart. But when your friend is, um, you know, presented to have a better life than you, you're jealous. Like, that's not very Christian-like. So there, there's that. So then she just decides that you know she wants she wants um sissy's daddy. But I'm gonna pause right there. Now we going back to to River. Pause, cause I don't. It's it's so much stuff to unpack, as you can see. Uh. Mm, All right, so boom. So River now goes on a date with a whole bunch of men. Again, she's trying to fill these men out. You know, she gives them the benefit of the doubt. I, I give her that. She gives them the benefit of the doubt until they start acting right. Crazy. So she was she was at dinner with a dude named Warren. So Warren, again, he has money. So she's basically, you know, like, I want to be with you. This and Warren basically calls her whole. It's like, you only have to one thing. So he takes out money, two $200 bills, right? He throws them on the floor. He makes her crawl on the floor and get the money. So in my head, I'm like, River, like, he just call you a hoe and say you have the money. Don't crawl on the floor. What do R what River do? She crawls on the floor. So now she crawling on the floor in the restaurant. Everybody looking at her, she just proved this point. So, but little do he know, that's going to be the last time he ever do that. So, she leaves the restaurant. She playing all nice, this, that, and the third. They drive or whatever. While they drive it, she realized, I think it was, what was it, on the Cross Bronx Expressway? It was either that or they was on the FDR. It was one of those. They one of the expressways. If you're from New York, then you know the Cross Bronx Expressway or the FDR. It was one of them, right? So she is, it's night outside. So she tells him pull over, right? So she like, listen, I want to, I want to give you, I want to perform oral sex. We're going to use the correct terms, right? I want to perform oral sex. So they pull over 
she she going down. So he first of all, this was okay. He's uncircumcised, right? And his penis smell. So I'm like, I know she's not about to do what I'm about to she about to do. She pulls I know it's a little gruesome. She do what she do. She give him all sex, holding her breath and all that. I'm just like, he first of all, he got some nerve to be uncircumcised. Then you got some nerve to be smelling like that and then and acting like that. Like you you gotta die. <laughs> no, let me stop. So she do what she do, then she ends up biting off his penis. Then Fast forward, she shoots him, kills him right then and there. She get hops out the car, leaves him on the side of the road. He ends up no, not I lied. She she pushes him over. She pushes him over. Drives the car through a um a self made hand wash, car wash, whatever. Leaves the car there, right? Cause you know it's gonna wash everything off. She the water goes inside the car, whatever. And she dips out. He ends up on on the news, right? In the same night, there was another dude that she was talking to. She went back to home. She changed the senator. She freshened up all that. She went to another dude, right? So, this other dude portrays herself to be a good dude as well. She goes to his crib. They have they have sex, whatever. He, he, he gets rough, starts talking crazy to her, right? Because she was smoking a cigarette in, in um his his house. So, she actually planned to kill him. So before she left her house to meet him, she had carried like her little trunk, right? Her trunk has her tools in it. After they have sex, um, he he slapped her for smoking in the house or whatever. He fell asleep. After he fell asleep, she went back to the car, got the trunk. She tied she tied him up, right? She he woke up screaming, da 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 da. She cut his penis off. She has something against cutting his penis off. I guess the the penis symbolizes. Uh, masculinity. So by cutting it off, you know, they don't have that anymore. I'm just guessing, but she had a thing for cutting penis off. And anytime she killed a, a man, she leaves a pink heart in their blood, whatever. That's why she's called a pink heart murderer. And so she tortures him, kills him, cuts off all his limbs, right? At the same time, she's hoping that, you know, the cops figure out it was her. Like she just had, she just had like this wish to be caught. Right, she has a vision to be caught, but she she's not caught. She's she's very strategic, as I said. But uh, as I'm reading, I'm like, something's just not adding up with all these all the, all of the characters. It's just it's just not adding up, right? And then she's also she's just also too too particular and, and, and meticulous in, in what she was doing. So I'm just I was second guessing stuff. So let me fast forward and make sure I didn't skip anything. All right, da -da -da. all right, so with this particular kill, let me just say this. So there was a, um, after she killed him, somebody knocked on the door. Then So she's like, all right, I just got to kill it. So she opened the door. It was a dude. Come to find out, the dude that she killed first, that she tortured, was was undercover gay, and his lover was the one who knocked on the door. She killed his lover. So, you know, you know, wrong time, wrong place. You should have stayed upstairs, my brother. You should have stayed upstairs. So now we back to Sissy. So, Sissy and April's having a conversation, and April asks Sissy to move into the apartment. At the, because April, you know, her story's not taking off. She's, she's not making money, so, you know, she got to move with Sissy. Sissy was a little hesitant, but then she agrees. April cooks, April cleans, April stays out her way. April makes things a little easier for her. So, she's like, all right. So, then they also have a conversation about the whole... Uh, you know, Pink Heart murderer and Sissy being her and, and, you know, her source and Sissy disagrees. She's like, I understand. I want you to succeed. I'm going to do what I, I got to do. I, I, I'm an awful woman in Parliament and you making a career. So she's like, you know, I'll do it. So, you know, that's that. So what... what all right. So remember, we go, we're going to go back. So this whole time, a couple weeks has passed, right? April never tells Sissy that her dad came to see her. She April is still in the type of time where she's filling uh Sissy's dad out. So but April alternative motive, ulterior motive, alter, uh, alternative, Jesus, alternative motive is that she wants Sissy's dad to herself. She starts falling for Sissy's dad. And she believes that her Sissy's dad could be something um, that Sissy doesn't have to know. She don't have to have to find out for the simple fact that she, she, she's never, uh, she's never, she hasn't seen him since she was five. And, you know, 
it wouldn't be anything to lose. So at one point, they both had a conversation where they was going through their feelings and expressing, like, you know, how their how the loss of their father not being in their life has truly impacted them and how the way that they interact with men, the way their perception of men is and how they don't trust men. And, and again, that carries over to today because I understand that. And, um, you know, for April to know all of this is still conjure up a plan to do what she was doing come on that's not a friend that's a snake you know what i'm saying a snake but sissy let her in so sissy ain't got nobody to blame herself right all right so now so april continues to go to dinner with sissy's dad Sissy notices that April's all, all of a sudden going out, and Sissy's like, oh, you got a new man, when well, I'm going to meet this new man. So April playing it off, and Sissy, Sissy's happy for April. You know, April's finally getting out. April's finally, you know, living life and not in a slump and out of her depression state. So, you know, Sissy's all for it, but I'm like, little do Sissy you know, like, that's your daddy, girl. That is your daddy. And that's that. So now... Let me fast forward a little bit. So, April tries to justify her actions of doing what she's doing for Sissy, saying that she's helping Sissy out by keeping her father away because her father did too much damage to her already. And I was just like, what? And then, at one point, they went to dinner. April and the, the dad's talking. The dad really wants to meet Sissy. The dad is just like, you know, he's scared, but he wants to do it because he lost some, uh, too much time already. Um, what else? That um, April's making a, like, listen, this is what it is. Like, I still don't really know you. I don't know your motive. Like, you know, it takes time. It takes patience. Like, if I like you, then I know Sissy's going to like you. So he's, he's falling for it. And I'm just like this, man. Right? So, pause there. So they go back to his house after the dinner she he pours her a drink whatever he wants to get to he said you know i i know you know stuff about me let me get to know you so what's going on you know in your life so april starts talking about her her daddy and she she goes off like yelling at the man like daddy why did you leave me daddy i needed you so he's taking back like what's wrong with this girl so he she goes she has a ten she goes off but when, whenever she talks, whenever April talks about her father, she goes, she blinks, she blinks out. She goes into another another world where you know the trauma that she's she's been through, well, especially with the loss of her father in her life. She she just perceiving him to be the daddy, so she goes off. She throws a temper tantrum. Next thing you know, she passes out. He goes over to her. She's just like, I'm sorry, this, that, and the third. Look up at him like, will you be, she asking like, will you be my daddy? He's like, the hell did I get myself into? And then she, she knows she making sexual just, justice towards him. They end up having sex. Um, she starts, she starts, uh, what you call this? Calling him daddy. But Loki, I thought that was creepy. Like, cause it wasn't, you know how some women, oh, some women call their partner like, hey daddy. Like, you know. In, in a sexy way, it was that and third. But when she was doing it, it was like, like, no, she's calling this man her father, her daddy. Like, she, I'm, in a way, she's, like, thinking that she's having sex with her father. And her father has come back to her. Her daddy, he is now going to be the replacement for her daddy. And she's getting happy. So, they can, now they having... Uh, it's not really an affair. They having sexual intercourse on a regular basis. And he starts degrading her. He starts treating her like trash. Like, he makes her do interacting bondage. He pees on her. He, he, what else did he do? Huh. Hold on. It's mad stuff. Like, he take, he takes photos of her. Um, he, he degraded her. Like, Anything that you could think of as far as degrading and treating her like a, 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 a scum on a piece of his shoe, he did that. And she justified his actions as, he loves me, I'm pleasing him, this is what he's into, um, I'm going to do what I need to do to keep him. And he, after he's done, he just throws her to the wayside. He talks crazy to her, like disrespectful. And I was just like... What is going on? Like, the book was just taking a, a turn. Well, each character, the book was taking a turn. The only same 
woman in this book I felt was sissy, right? So, fast forward. The book goes back to River. So, the the book goes into, you know, the reason why, the chapter, no, sorry, goes up to the reason why River kills the man. I, like I said, all the men deserve it. She fantasizes about telling the world that she's the pink heart murderer, where she goes on national TV. She does several interviews explaining everything. She understands that she's going to be in jail, but she wants a book deal. And with the book deal, she'll make money. But she understands that, you know, she'll never see the money because she's going to be in jail. This, that, and third. So now... We go back to Sissy. So Sissy's on the type of time where she's now she's looking into who the pink heart murderer is. Um, you know, what what could possibly like who it could possibly be, right? And and why. So there was a situation where there was another dom domestic dispute. Right, a, a, a notorious uh, woman beater. He was beating his wife in the parking lot. Uh, Sissy and her partner pull up um, to the scene. Sissy had the woman suspect well in her in custody while her partner had the dude put him in the in the in the um the police car. Right, so her partner back is turned. So Sissy now not paying attention. The woman suspect runs up on her her officer, hits her officer, knock her officer out, her partner out. Right. And her, her partner gets hurt. So now there's an internal affairs investigation. Sissy, Sissy gets pulled into her, her captain's um, office, right? So, one second. Well, yeah, the captain. So he goes, like, did not save you with the situation in Brooklyn? Um, you know... I, I could save you with this situation. He start making sexual advances toward towards her. Sissy gets mad and like you know you do what you gotta do. I'm a you know I'm a total turn up here. She storms out, right? She storms out. Then she goes to uh, a bar to cool off. At the bar, she meets a bartender named E. The bartender's talking to her. You know, Sissy a little feisty, whatever. Next thing you know, her and the bartender get get lit. They end up back at the bartender's place. Her name is Eve. Let me adjust about her name. Her name is Eve. They end up at Eve place. Sissy ends up having her first sexual encounter with a woman. She she's shocked, but she enjoys it. You know, they start talking after. You know, it's a little awkward, or whatever. It could be a little awkward. We do it something for the first time, and um, you know, they decide that you know it was awkward, but it wasn't. It wasn't weird. Like Sissy was like, you know, I'll call you this that third. Even like whatever, you know. So the, I I believe that was Eve first time as well. Um, Sissy initiated everything, you know, again, they say liquor is the root to the truth. So they begin seeing one another. They start growing clothes. They start falling for each other. Sissy was like, you know, questioning, not questioning, like, am I a lesbian? This then the third. I'm just like, you know, you don't deal with men. You don't want to deal with men. Men has hurt you. You feel, you start feeling complete with this woman. So sis, live your life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She make you happy. Live your life. So now... This is where shit start getting a little crazy. I'm fast forward. So the same captain, sergeant, whatever you want to call him, right? He approaches, he, he comes to Sissy's home knocking on the door. So again, everybody's trying to find the pink heart killer. Before I mention this, there was a scene in the in the book where River went to a uh River killed the 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 husband that was being his wife in the parking lot, right? She killed him and she killed the dude who worked in the auto shop. She made it seem like her car was a stop. They went to the auto shop. Um she was there. There was two other women walked in. She made she actually made pause. She actually made the two the the mechanic dude, the owner of the shop and the dude who was being his wife in the parking lot have sex like made them do whatever. The the dude that was beating his wife in the park lot actually went home and committed suicide because she took pictures and stuff like that, right? So that's that. So outside of the um, mechanic shop, there's pictures and all that. So back to the sergeant. So the sergeant pops up at Sissy's house, right? So Sissy opens the door. He's like, I know who you are. So I'm like, obviously, like, she worked for you. He's like, you are the pink heart killer. So I'm like, what? And the book is like, what? So I'm like, what happened? 
So he said, I did a little research into the, the pink heart murder and you are the pink heart murder. So he puts a whole bunch of pictures in front of Sissy, right? Hold up. So Sissy look at the pictures. She's in shock. She sees that the pictures look like April. So I'm like, wait, hold up. Let me put this one down. The the sergeant is accusing Sissy of being a pink heart murder. Sissy is looking at the pictures and saying, oh my God, my roommate April is the killer. So immediately, I already knew what the book was on from the, after this, after I read that part, I already knew what type of time the book was on. And the only reason why I knew what type of time the book was on was because of my current profession, right? I'm not going to spoil it yet for you guys. So let's, let's get it. So now, it, uh, Sissy's like, oh my God, like, I have a murderer living in my house. So the, the sergeant, captain, whatever you call him, was like, I'm, I'm going to hold this down. I could turn your ass in. I made copies of everything. Uh, the pictures show who you are. You know, from now on, you, you're going to be my bitch. When I come over here every week, you're going to give me sex. You're going to do what I want. And uh, if you don't, we're going to go to the cop. So my thing is... You know, and then he ends up he ends up hitting Sissy and beating her, whatever, right? So the thing, my thing is, if Sissy knew that that wasn't her in the pictures, why did she agree to be the captain sergeant's bitch? And I was really, I wasn't confused. Like I said, I was just like, I was putting the pieces together, and I was like, that's this is the reason why, and I was right. So she agrees to be his bitch. So now she's thinking like. You know, April, this is April. April portrayed me this, then the third. Like, she's, I had the, the killer to resign in my house. I'm like, so I'm not adding up, right? So, what happened after that? Flip, flip, flip. All right. All right. So, then we go to the chapter, the next chapter goes into River, right? So, River is on a, t okay, pause. So, River went to a doctor's office in and all that with her OBGYN and get tests and all that. She was flirting with the doctor. She told the doctor, like, yo, um, I want some some time outside of office hours. The doctor's like, you gotta come up with a thousand dollars, I'll make a house call. Alright. So River also wants to find out like what what do people know about the pink heart killer? So she calls the police station and was like, yo, you know, oh wait, pause. Pause. At some point, I forgot how it happened exactly. It was basically, oh, on the, the news says Sissy Dixon was, um, wait, 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 pause. I want to make sure I get it right. Hold on. I was on the right, uh, right track. My bad. So she calls the police station. The sergeant captain picks up. She's calling to inquire about the pink heart murder just to see, like, you know, what kind of information they have on it. So when the sergeant picks up, she's, he's like, you know, she, River's like, you know, I want to know who's in charge of, um, the the pink heart murder case he asks who's calling she she tells him some other name he's the sergeant that was like you know you stupid bitch um no he plays along at first and then he was like you know you stupid bitch you playing around um just be ready uh sissy i know this is you you playing around you think it's all that so i'm like again i'm putting the pieces together i'm like river calls the station but the sergeant thinks that that sissy's calling if y'all can't figure it out right now I'm going to need y'all to read some more thriller books, all right? I'm going to need y'all to read some more thriller books. It's as plain as day what's going on. So, River's like, the hell he talking about? Like, she's just mad confused, like, all right, whatever. So, he basically tells uh, River before they hang up that Sissy Dixon is in charge of the case. So, River's like, I got to find out who this Sissy Dixon is. I'm like, okay. But again, the sergeant or captain, whatever we call him, thinks that he was talking to Sissy on the phone. I'm like, it's either a coincidence, you know, I'm trying to, I already proved myself right, but I'm like, at the time, like, it's either a coincidence that they just, their voice mirror each other, or something's just, what it, and not. Right? So now, we back to April. So April still having sex with Stuart. Stuart is, um, Sissy's father. That's his name, right? So, he's still asking, when am I gonna meet Sissy? Um, and she's still giving him BS answers. So, April goes home one day, right? April goes home and Sissy is in the apartment waiting for her. Sitting down like this. 
waiting for April to come. So April pulls up in the crib. She leaves the door open. Sissy immediately is charging her like, you the fucking pink heart killer. You this whole time. So she's shooting at her. She ends up shooting the mirror like crazy, like going off. Right? So at the same time, April's like, what are you talking about? This is not, it's not me. Uh, what are, what's going on? So Sissy has her nine millimeter issue, uh, service weapon, right? And also in her possession is the 38 caliber. I'm like, the 38 caliber is the same gun that River uses to murder men. So how did it get in Sissy's apartment, right? Because in the book, River, um, the characters, sit, River never interacting with Sissy or April. So I'm like, how the hell did River's handgun get in Sissy's apartment where Sissy is accusing April of being a pink heart murderer because she says she found the weapon and she found some other tools and stuff under April's bread, bed. So I'm like, I already figured it out. I'm like, I was right. Long story short, Eve comes um, knocking on on the door looking for Sissy. So she sees that because uh, at one point Sissy was chasing April through the apartment and all that. So April, I mean Eve knocks on the well, knock on the door, but she comes into the apartment like Sissy, what's going on? So Sissy tells Eve like, be careful, take this this gun. The pink heart murderers in the apartment is April. So they search high and low for April. And then Sissy's like, you know, April got away. And I'm like, the fuck? I'm like, if April got away, she would have ran past Eve, right? Because Eve was by the door. So I'm like, I already know what it is. I know what it is. I want to tell you about I, wanna, I don't want to spoil the story. So now, Eve is just like, you know, there's no killer here. What's going on? So the neighbors had called the police. The police come. They realize it's sissy. They're like, oh, sissy, like, you know, showing Eve how to work the gun. The, 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 it discharged by accident. It's, it's you know, it's whatever. So they called it off, whatever, right? So now we back to, um, we back to sissy. Hold on. All right, now we could go back. We could skip that part. So now we back to River, right? So at the same time, while all this is going on, right? Um, the sergeant, the, the, okay, pause. So remember I told you that River made an appointment, a house call for the, the, um, the, the doctor OBGYN to come to our house for after hour service for sex, right? At the same time, remember the sergeant captain threatened sissy and told sissy like once a week you're gonna do what I, what I need to do, right? So this is, everything I'm about to say happens in the same day. So... Uh, River is at home. She's like, yeah, I'm about to get my rocks off. I'm waiting for the doctor, right? So, so now, this will happen. Pause. Let me take a sip of wine. Okay. So, as River's in the apartment, waiting for the doctor has come. The sergeant knocks on the door. She opens the door. The sergeant's like, you ready for me? So River's like, who are you? So the sergeant is like, you know, I, I, I know what you did there, calling the precinct, playing the, you playing, you trying to play kinky this and third. So River's is like, like, I don't know who you are, but whatever. So he starts slapping River and being rough. So River is already on the type of time, like, all right, I'm going to play along. So River has the gun under under the couch, right? So she tells the sergeant captain to sit down on the couch while she gonna give him oral sex. As he does that, she pulls the gun, she shoots him in the head, kill him, right? So now she hides the body, this then there in the back room, cleans up the blood, refreshes up. The doctor comes, right? The doctor comes um, in the apartment. She's basically like, I don't have the four thousand. He's like, bitch, you playing with me? Um, she basically pulls out the gun, makes him have sex with her. Uh, you know, they do whatever she, they, they do. And then at one point, I believe, hold on. I believe she had put the gun down or he did something. Um, and the gun end up, um, oh, wait. This is what I, I don't want, I'm not going to get into that gruesome scene. So we pause, whatever. Hold on, da, 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 da. 
Okay. I forgot how the gun ha the gun scene happened. He ends up um she was distracted at some point. So the doctor think quick. He gets the gun and then all of a sudden everything um you know went blank, right? So when everything went blank after you know they're in the apartment, so I'm like, damn, the doctor got away. So now the chapter goes into April. So it it's, it says April's name, but it, it starts talking about Sissy. So Sissy is currently on trial for murder, right? She has a lawyer. Sissy's t t um telling the lawyer like, you know. Why why am I on trial? What's going on? She keeps um oh pause, pause. Let me make it make sense. Pause, guys. So I, this is the reason why. So the heading for the next chapter says April, right? But it's Sissy who's on trial. So Sissy's sitting in the courtroom um next to her lawyer. She's telling the lawyer like they they say it's sissy because they the they know how sissy her 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 um her auto appearance but the the same time that she's sitting in the trial room she keeps saying my name is April Davis telling the lawyer my name is April Davis right so but in the trial they keep calling her sissy Dixon if you haven't figured it out yet I'm gonna tell you so during the trial they like you know the prosecutors like this uh uh sissy dixon has killed 32 people um she is a police officer she's one she was the city's own and she committed all these heinous acts so it, it is determined that sissy has a personality disorder so sissy river and april davis is one person right they don't call it personality disorder, but we, for the sake of the timing of the book, we're gonna use this language. So, with personality disorder, you can have you can have multiple personalities, right? Um, and it's not guaranteed that each personality is going to interact with one another. You know, so I could be talking to you right now, and then next thing you know, another one. Uh, if I had a personality disorder, another one of my personalities would take over, and they'll never interact they don't know what's going on like you don't know who is who they shift you just don't know so that's what she has so their each personality is unaware of one another except at the time sissy uh well they are unaware right so sissy and april is really close but you know they thinking that they they right next to each other right so it was determined that the whole time this is why i said the book is sick Sissy was Sissy April was having sex with her own father. It wasn't it wasn't three different women. April was not a separate woman. They're all one woman, and he was having sex with his daughter. With his daughter, come on, his daughter. He's sick. He's sick. Come on, he's sick. So now that just disgusted me. Like I'm just like yo, what's yo? I was done with the book. Honestly speaking, this book disgusted me. I'm not even gonna lie. It disgusted me. So now April is sitting there confused, like what's going on? Like why they keep um calling me sissy? Why they doing all this stuff? Why am I on trial? Um so this is what happened. In the apartment when she was getting ready, you know, after she made the doctor, she forced the doctor to have sex with her. The doctor tried to get away. He turned the gun on her. She actually set off a gas explosion. She actually would have gone away with the murders and everything if the gas explosion never occurred and they 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 found the, the gun and all the evidence, right? So she would that's how she ends up getting caught. So now um, you know, they take they take um Sissy back to the cell. So again, at this time, the personality that they, that's on trial is April Davis. Sissy is not in attendance. River is not in attendance. So when they take April back to the cell, uh, Sissy, uh, she's talking to herself. So Sissy fin finally comes out, right? So the guard is like, look at this shit. Like they think it's comical. They want, they're like, yo, she's doing it again. She's talking to herself. So Sissy is actually in the cell talking to April. Well, well, April's in the cell talking to Sissy, whichever one you want to put And like, you know, what's going on? I don't know. So April is pleading her case. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you about your father. I didn't mean to hurt you. Sissy's like, but you did. You tried from this down at the right. So now the um April's lawyer, Sissy's lawyer, come back and then um 
finally Sissy emerges. So now her personality takes over, and she's um the lawyer thinks still thinks that it's April. So he's like, you know, uh April. She's like, and then Sissy was like, my name is not April, I'm Sissy. So he's like, good, I need to talk to you. He's like, listen, your father took the stand. You know, your father took the stand against you. He's telling telling the whole world that you're sick and you deserve to be put away. He didn't raise you like that. This and the third. So low key. The, the um, lawyer's like, I need to ask you a question. So Sissy's like, all right, what's good? Basically. So she's like, you know, were you ever molested as a child? Did your father ever do anything to you? It was determined that, you know, the father molested Sissy as a child. And, you know, due to that, that she, I think that's where the multiple, her, her personalities emerged from the trauma, right? She created those personalities to overcome the trauma. And the lawyer used that as a defense tactic. So, you know, she ends up, it was determined that she was unfit to stand trial. But the, the thing that I was amazed, I'm like, the whole time, everybody thought the lawyer, the courtroom, the guards, all that thought it was only two personalities, uh, a, psycho, a psychologist, uh, it was a psychologist, a psychiatrist, I, think, I forgot which one testified, and determined that she did have the personality disorder and she's unaware of it, right? And they only got to meet sissy and april as a personality when they was doing their, their diagnosis right so after everything said and done they uh sissy april who whatever they in the in the cell and at this whole time as a reader i'm like they don't know that river there's another personality i'm like river didn't never emerge so after it's all said and done um river is just like what the hell <laughs> so they they take her to they all, when they about to take her to the mental health facility, right? River emerges as the the dominant personality. So when they when the lawyers talking to them and all that, and then the lawyers like you know somebody wants to come see you. So Eve is like talking, thinking she's talking to Sissy. So Eve comes up is like you know Sissy, I'm gonna stand beside you. I'm gonna come see you every day. I'm like Eve is really a ride or die like. You know, she she really fell for Sissy. And Sissy was the good personality, right? Um, she was mostly the stable one. And um, I'm just like, all right. And then while Eve is talk, thinking she's talking to Sissy, River emerges as a dominant personality. And is like, you know, are you Eve? So Eve is like, yeah. And then uh, in front of everybody, River was like, call me River. Whatever, right? And then she kisses Eve right there on the lips. I'm like. Damn, y'all finally gonna meet my bitch forever. Nah, that's not my bitch. But, um, yeah, so that's how it ended. Um, I was disgusted by this book. <laughs> it, it it wasn't a favorite of mine. Uh, I, I, I already figured it out, like, everything that was going on. Again, because of my profession and, you know, what I studied in school, I already knew the diagnosis just by the clues. Um, but I wanted to read it, but, like, River's character, it was a little too gruesome and too too uh, crazy for me. Um, I like Sissy's character, April. She's just a conniving bee, but, you know, you got to understand, those are the three different personalities. Again, the book was all right, but I, I wouldn't read the book again. It was just, it just had too much, like, I was disgusted by the dog scene. Um... But I like where it was going. Like, if you don't know anything about uh, clinical diagnosis, then the book would be intriguing to you. Like, the, the, the thriller part, the susp thriller suspense part of it about the three personalities, it would be intriguing to you because, like, oh, my God. Like, you know, but being that I know about it, I was like, uh, yeah. And then it was just too, too, too raw for me, too, too nasty. Um... But shout out to Kiki Hendrix for suggesting this book. Um, again, I understand the storyline. I, I I like I like the storyline. I just didn't like how how uh, gruesome the book was. Um, but yeah. So again, the next book review is gonna be Imani All Mine. I must get the person who suggested the book. But other than that, you already know the vibes, guys. I'm out, and I'll see you next time.